Consider the polynomial 2x cubed minus 9x squared minus 60x. Our goal in this video is to sketch the graph of this polynomial. We won't use our graphing calculator. Instead, we're going to use everything we learned about functions and limits and first and second derivatives in order to make a pretty good picture of how this graph would look. Okay, so let's go ahead by beginning to think about the limiting behavior. What's going to be the limit of this function as x goes off to infinity? Well, as you plug in really big values for x, it's pretty clear that the x cubed term is going to dominate. You know, a thousand cubed is a billion, which is so much bigger than a thousand squared, a million, or a thousand. So, so the cube term dominates, and so you just need to look at the, at the first term here, and since it's a two times it, it'll be going off to positive numbers, really, really big positive numbers. It'll be heading off towards infinity as you go to the right, as x goes to infinity. So, so your graph is ultimately going to be going up and to the right, off to infinity. Similarly, we can ask what is the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the function. And we get that as, as we go off to negative infinity, the function, what's going to happen? Well, the same analysis as before, only the x cubed term will matter. That's the term that will dominate. When you plug in really big negative numbers, like negative a thousand, negative a million, negative a billion, this, this will become a negative number because cubed keeps negative, negative, times by two, still negative. So it'll be coming down here in the negative direction. So as you go to the left, you'll be coming down. But there's still a whole lot of things that can happen in between. You know, it could be going up and down and doing all kinds of roller coaster like moves. And so to begin to appreciate what's happening in, in the middle of this graph, let's go ahead and focus on the first derivative. The first derivative of the polynomial by the power rule would be 6x squared minus 18x minus 60. You can factor that to pull out the 6, you get x squared minus 3x minus 10. And then we can further factor that down to get x minus 5 times x plus 2. What this tells us is there are some critical points. We're going to identify the critical values at, at, x, equals, at x equals either 5 or negative 2. The, the, the derivative is 0, and that's, that's a possibility. Maybe there are maximums there. Maybe there are minimums. In order to analyze what's going on, let's use the first derivative test. That is, I'm going to consider a number line. And, and I have these special mark, points marked off at negative 2 and at 5. Those are the special values of x that make my derivative, my f prime of x, equal to 0. Now, we still need to analyze the other points in between. And so you can pick some point in between minus 2 and 5, something like 0. Plug that into your derivative. Notice it's negative which means your function is decreasing from minus 2 to 5. Pick some point to the left, some point smaller than minus 2. You get like a point like minus 3. Plug that into your derivative. Let's test what happens. Minus 3 squared is 9 times 6 is 54. Minus 3 times minus 18 is a positive 54. And so those are going to cancel, but it ends up being, ends up being negative. You subtract the 60, so you get, you get negative. And so that means the function is still decreasing. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? If I have minus 3 and I plug that in, I get 9 times 6 positive 54. But then the minus becomes plus 54, so it's actually 108. So when I subtract the 60, it's a positive number. This should actually be a positive number. Oops, that's a positive, which means that, that instead of decreasing, this is, this is increasing. So be careful with those signs to make sure you don't, you don't flip it backwards. This is actually increasing on, on that left interval. From negative infinity up until negative 2, you're increasing. The last interval we care about are numbers bigger than 5. You can plug in any of them you want, 6, 7, 10, 100. Let's just do 6. Plug 6 into this function. 6 squared is 36 times another 6 is um, 6 times 36 is 180 plus 36, so it's 216. 216 
minus the 60 is 156, and 18 times 6 is going to be 60 plus 48, 108. Well, that's less than what we had, so it's still a positive number. Still a positive number when you plug in 6, and so it's increasing on that interval. Let's just take note of this here. We had a critical value at negative 2, and we had a critical value at 5. And we had when you were smaller than when you were smaller than negative two, your function was was increasing. Between negative two and five, your function was decreasing. And then after five, your function was increasing again. Okay. But what we really want to know is we want some, some idea of, of how this function looks. How do we glue these pieces together? It's probably worthwhile for us to actually figure out what, what are these points? Like, if you plug negative 2 into your function, where are you at? It's a pretty critical value, so let's actually graph that value. Negative 2, plug it into your function, you get negative 8 times 2, negative 16. Here it's 2 squared, so it's positive 4, times 9 gives you 36. So you have negative 16 minus 36. That's negative 52. And then I'm going to add to that 120. So, okay, this, this guy's really tall. <laughs> he's still pretty high up. He's, he's way off the charts. He's way up there somewhere, right? And similarly, you can, you can plug 5 into, into your graph to see where you're going to plot him. 5 cubed is 125 times 2 is 250 minus 9 times 25. 9 times 25 is 225. So this ends up being 25 minus, minus 300. Okay, that's, that's really negative. Okay, that's, that's like way down here somewhere. Okay, <laughs> you can find the exact values, you can plot them, but you know, I, I, my, my, my axis isn't that big. So it's way up higher, way down there. And, and you may be tempted then to just connect these dots to say, well, your graph must be coming up and then going down and then coming up again. And that's true, you know, like, like, yeah, it should, it should look something, it should look something like this. But you know that, like, you know, in real life, polynomials aren't just straight lines. They have some curvature to them. They're, that is, they, they bend down and bend up, the concave down and concave up. In order to figure out the concavity, we need to look at the second derivative. So let's go now and calculate the second derivative of this function. Our first derivative is here. We're now going to calculate the second derivative, the derivative of the derivative. It's going to be 18x minus 18, which if you pull out 18 out, it's just 18 times x minus 1. But it's pretty clear what's happening. The second derivative is 0 at 1. So if I was to do a little number line, the special number now is at 1. When x is 1, my second derivative is zero. And then we can think about what happens if I plug in some value bigger than one. Plug in two or six or 15 or whatever, let's just do two because it's bigger than one. And I get a positive number. So remember positive for second derivative is concave up. Concave up. It's smiling because it's positive. Plug in a number smaller than one, like zero, you end up getting a negative value. A negative value so it's concave down, frowny face, concave, concave down. Okay, what that tells me is, is the overall curvature of this graph should be that up until one, up until the point one, I'm bending down, but then after one, I'm bending up. And, and so you can begin to flesh this out some. You say, okay, so I'm gonna bend down some and bend up some. And your graph looks something like this. What do we call the point one? Well, remember at one we say it's an inflection point because you move from, from concave down to concave up. That's our inflection point. Again, that's a pretty important point, so you might want to find out exactly where it's at. It's one, and if you plug one into your function, you get two and nine, so that's um, negative seven minus 60 minus 67. Okay, I probably, I probably should have made it so at one my function was actually a little bit negative there. It was a little bit negative, you know. My function probably should look a little bit more like, a little bit more like this, so that at one, I'm some negative value, negative 67. But, but the point is, before one, you're concave down. It's all bending down, whereas after one, you're concave up. 
the concave up. So we see by gluing together the information about limits, what's going on towards infinity and minus infinity, the information about the first derivative and the information about the second derivative, we're able to produce a pretty good graph of, of the polynomial. I mean, go ahead, plug this into some graphing calculator, some computer algebra system, and, and you can see that you get a graph that pretty much resembles, pretty much resembles what we sketched here.